today on X-Play, going way too fast with F-Zero GX. Of course. The Blue Frisbee of Death in Tron 2.0. And Star Trek Shattered Universe boldly goes where no man has... You didn't see that. It's game time. Warning, two people who may cause itching and irritation, it's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome to X-Play, where we suggest you decloak your Romulan Warbird because we have Star Trek. Yes, I'm dork. No argument here. We also have Tron with the glowing and the zippy light cycles. Zip. Zip. And we have Motocross with the Game Boy Advance. And inventions that every game should have. You should have it, but it may not exist. Yes, but when we start things off with a new racing game where you go really, really fast, like 2,000 miles per hour fast. This is our review of the latest installment in the F-Zero series, F-Zero GX for the GameCube. I had heard through the grapevine that F-Zero GX for the GameCube was challenging. So, in preparation for the review, I decided to get my sorry ass in gaming shape. After a grueling regiment of reflex and endurance drills, I was finally ready to take on the beast that is F-Zero GX. But I quickly found out that nothing could prepare me for the challenge. Let's get one thing out of the way right now. F-Zero is fast. How fast? This is easily the fastest racing game ever made. Your eyes will dry out because you can't blink or you'll miss a turn. Hydrate! Yes, sir! Hydrate! Yes, sir! Hydrate! Yes, sir! This brings up F-Zero's biggest flaw. It's difficulty balancing. It's not uncommon to blaze through all the races in a Grand Prix taking first place each time, only to lose all your continues on some insanely unfair track. Once you get over the fact that it's insanely hard and practically impossible at times, you'll be just fine. Of course. Ah! 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 Or not. Despite its extreme difficulty, S Zero GX is still a great racing game. The controls are sublime with each of the more than 30 cars handling completely differently. Of course, if you're not down with racing using any of the supplied cars, you can create your own. Parts are acquired as you make progress through the Grand Prix and story modes that you can use to trick out your machine. You can even create your own logos. Check out this sweet, sweet X-Play ride. If you love the old school aesthetic of playing to perfection, F-Zero is a perfect five out of five. But with its difficulty balancing issues, we see many broken controllers in its future. We give it a dizzying four out of five. No, 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 that, that really happened. It's charming. Something we didn't cover in the review is the fact that you can save your game on a memory card and then take that memory card to an arcade, plug it into an F-Zero cabinet there, then you take it back home and you unlock a bunch of new cards. That's if you can find an arcade. It's like looking for a Democrat in Idaho. Boom, boom. Anyway, to demonstrate this game's breathtaking speed, Adam and I are going to have an F-Zero race. Hopefully, it won't make the home audience nauseous. All right, here we go. Here we go. I am so ready to take Morgan down. Yes, I'm on the top, and as you can see, I have the lead. Yes. That's right. I'm not worried. You're going to screw it up. Look at that. Quick. There we are. Tempo! Uh, mm -hmm. Oh. Where'd you go? So, no, um, Tempo! Oh, and, and now I'm in front of Morgan! <laughs> I'm going right, I'm going right. Oh, okay, that was bad. Wait, I can I, see I, you, I, I can on. see you. No, it's okay, yeah, I'm almost you there, I'm almost there. You can see me. Where no. is Morgan? No. Where can Morgan uh -huh. be? Oh, it's because uh -huh. she's behind me, but I'm you not going to bother looking in the rear mirror because I know what it's like to be losing pace. You need to start paying attention. Oh. 
Oh. Oh. Oh, Morgan, I think I'm going to be sick again. again. Okay, somebody get the bucket. Oh. In her. GPA, 3.9. Pay per day, $25. <laughs> Holding Adam Sessler's barf bucket. Prices. No. That's right. It's Tron time. Yay. All oh, the memories. Blowing discs, mm. light cycles, actress mm -hmm. Sydney Morgan in a bodysuit and a neon blue swim cap. Let's take a dip. Mm, thanks. Tron the movie came out way back in 1982 and so did the arcade version. Now later, another version was released for the Commodore 64. That was in 89. Yeah, that was actually wasn't that long ago. No. Now there's Tron 2.0 for the PC and it's a first person shooter. Sort of. Just watch the review. Tron 2.0. Greetings, program. Greetings, program. Greetings, programs. Just a quick glance at the neon-bordered world of this game makes me feel like I'm back in 1982. Oh, the horror, the shame, the indignity. Well, there was that. It also led to the creation of the classic Tron arcade game. In 2003, Tron 2.0 continues the story of the world inside our CPUs. Hey, what do you think this is? Pong? Al? This is Jet, the son of Alan Bradley. When his father is mysteriously kidnapped, Jet finds himself digitized by Alan's AI, Mathria. A terrible virus is spreading through the system, corrupting every program in its path, and Mathria needs the help of a user. Soon, Jet finds himself on the run from virus-infected programs, the computer's internal security, and other outside forces. In the course of Jet's adventure, he'll use a multitude of strange digital weapons. There's the classic Tron identity disc. I'd love that sound. One more time. Okay, I'm over it. You've also got a sniper rifle. Grenades that look like mucus weird purple weaponry, and an electric rod that makes enemies babble like cretins. Huh? <laughs> Even with all this hardware, you'll end up using the disc throughout most of the game. Why? Because killing people with a glowing frisbee is cool. <laughs> Tron 2.0 is a pretty standard first-person shooter at its core. Gameplay consists of the usual mix of firefights, switch and key hunting, and boss fights but the setting adds a visual and narrative twist. Since you're in the computer, you don't have abilities. You have subroutines that must be activated or deactivated depending on how much memory you have to spare. Keys are called permissions and are downloaded from bins. You're really just equipping a shotgun and taking the red key card out of a crate, but the conceit of the digital world makes it feel somehow fresh. What doesn't feel fresh are the overly difficult boss fights and the fact that a single stray shot can end your game. Illegal program termination. Man, killing one lousy innocent program and the whole thing shuts down. Obviously, everyone in Tron is running Windows. Illegal program termination. Multiplayer offers disc combat online, but light cycle matches can only be played single player or on a local network. Disappointing, but only because the light cycles are so much fun. If you haven't seen the movie, a lot of the game's setup and references will go right over your head like a fat lady on a pole vault. Tron fans and those looking for an unorthodox take on the standard first-person shooter routine will love it. X-Play gives Tron 2.0 a 4 out of 5. Quick, name the seventh even prime number. I... I can't figure it. Unable to... You know that green guy dances like we did in the Mobile Light Force 2 review. I know, he's really good. Well, you know, there's a brand new tech TV show called Invent This. It follows real people trying to change the world, one jetpacker's self-flushing cat toilet at a time. And in honor of that, we decided to invent a few gaming products of our own. Here's what happens when X-Play invents. Be scared. In the X-Play Labs, we're busy making the world a better place for gamers. Every day, we're coming up with ideas so new, so amazing, they're not just inventions, they're explosions. Everyone loves fighting games, but wouldn't it be great if your game could fight back? 
With our new Punchomatic 8000, now it can! Uh oh! Looks like there are still a few bugs in the system! Explensions! Why is Morgan not playing right? Why are the petty annoyances of the outside world bringing your game down? Put on our patented cone of silence and the cares of the world just slip away! Explensions! Little Adam loves to play games, but some mature games are just too racy for developing minds like his. With our handy dematurification goggles, watchful parents can set the level of filth they want their young ones to see. Don't worry, Adam. You can see it when you're older. Explensions! Teach your kids not to be a potty mouth online with the Zaptastic Shock headset. Now anytime they say a naughty word, a mild 12,000 volt shock goes through their head. Hmm, do I smell bacon? Explensions! Once in a while, a game comes along that even we have trouble beating. That's when we bring out our secret weapon. It's so secret, we had to hide it in a box. Interns. Explensions! And then there are the games we just can't stand playing. If you have this problem, whip out the Improvenator, now available in fashionable his and her styles. Ah, much better. Explensions! Finally, for the ultimate in gaming longevity, try the X-Pants Portable Comfort Unit. You'll never need to pause the game again, and you can leave your competition all wet. Once again, science brings you the sweet smell of success. Um, that reminds me. Did you remember to poke holes in the intern box before we left the game lab? I'm going to be right back. Okay, I smell a lawsuit. At least I hope that's what I smell. Up next, Itty Bitty Bikes in Freak Style. Once again, two people on a road to nowhere, Adam Setzler and Morgan Webb. It's a circular road. Welcome back to x Flight, the show that makes the message boards light up like a Christmas tree. A burning, itching Christmas tree. Yes, we're back. And we have Freak Style, which sounds like an 80s dance movement, but whatever. Yeah, well, okay, the original Freak Style for the PS2 was made by EA Big. These are the guys who more or less revolutionized the trick system in extreme sports games with SSX and all its various archetypes. And yeah, Freak Style is the motocross version of SSX Tricky. And now it's been ported to the Game Boy Advance. Here's our review of Freak Style for the GBA. Look at the teeny little extreme racers. Aren't they just the cutest? Okay, maybe not. Behold, the graphical glory that is freak style for the GBA. Okay, once again, maybe not. Back in the day, we played a lot of the original freak style for the PS2. It came from the same developers as SSX, and it showed. We liked its killer trick system and graphics. We didn't like its tough controls and tougher opponents. But overall, it was a pretty darn good game. Freak Style for the GBA is one of those most unfortunate of ports where the developers managed to bring over all the craptastic things of the original and leave out all the juicy goodness. The graphics, well, yeah, it's the GBA, but still, how excited can you get when your tiny, tiny racer pulls off a big trick? Woohoo! And there's no punishment for using the same trick over and over. So players concerned with simply winning each race, they'd only pull cliffhanger after cliffhanger after cliffhanger and boost onto the finish line. Oftentimes, the easiest way to win is to forget the tricks altogether and just drive real fast. Pushing A, pushing A, steer. Oh boy, what a blast. Unlocking new characters as you go is absolutely essential. We spent almost as much time struggling with the crappy racers on the first couple courses as we did playing the rest of the game. We seem to steer primarily by means of a fishtail maneuver that is nearly impossible to control. And it sure doesn't help that the other racers can execute perfect turns from the get-go. 
The tracks all fall into the generic dirt, street, snow categories we know all too well. Ooh, lava. That's just great. Okay, I can see how molten lava would slow you down, but you get the same effect from driving on the slightly darker dirt. What kind of souped up dirt bike can't handle a little bit of mud? If your mom will be killed by mafia goons if you don't play every single extreme game on the GBA, then by all means, pick up Freakstyle. Otherwise, you're better off steering clear. We give Freakstyle a 2 out of 5. Freakstyle bad. Star Trek good. Yes, Tarzan. That makes me jay. Anyway, we have a Trek game after the break. Up next, beam me up, Scotty. It's Star Trek Shattered Universe. Warp speed number one, Ensign Webb and Captain Sessler are back. Why am I the Ensign? I don't know. You were Tarzan a moment ago. Anyway, kids, it's Trek time. Earlier, it was Tron time. Maybe soon, it'll be tree time. What does that even mean? Come on. All right, so we all know that Activision is suing Paramount because they say their Star Trek license is worthless. <clears throat> but they should hush up already because the premise of this Trek game from uh, Starscreen Interactive is awesome. Maybe it's because it's not from... Shh, it's a secret. Here's our preview of Star Trek Shattered Universe. Space, the final frontier. Maybe it's the gradual erosion of the ozone layer, or perhaps it's just a sign of the end of days. But apparently, the people who control the Star Trek licenses are starting to loosen up just a little. Celsius yield down to 25%. Our long-range scan on the upcoming Star Trek Shattered Universe proves that Star Trek games are getting, by degrees, a little darker, a little less wussy, and a little heavier on the actual ass-kicking. All hands, prepare for impact. Star Trek Shattered Universe goes right for the old school gold. It's basically based on one of the classic series' most radical episodes, Mirror Mirror, which takes place in a grim alternate universe where the normally benign United Federation of Planets is instead a galaxy-crushing empire. Chekhov, prepare to transport your people. We're almost there. Captain, the last Former USS Enterprise helmsman Hikaru Sulu, now captain of the starship Excelsior, finds himself in a ship flung once again into a brutal mirror universe and must take up arms alongside his alternate world allies, the Klingon and Romulan forces, against the oh-so-oppressive alternate universe Federation. Welcome to the eye of the storm, old comrade. That would be a cranky alternate universe Commander Chekhov right there. Conspiracy to betray the Empire has been compromised. Captain, the Enterprise has locked phasers on the Ranger. Yep, so basically, things are pretty backwards assed up in here. Got it? Now, combat in the Star Trek universe has traditionally been of the big ship to big ship variety. The Shattered Universe assumes the existence of small, nimble, combat ready spacecraft that are primed for dogfighting. So, regular Universe Sulu will have to make do with what he's got. Mr. I don't care if the shuttles have become pumpkins and the pilots are white mice. Launch everything you've got immediately. Gamers will control one of the small space fighters in battles. These assorted combat craft will pack both laser beams and photon weapons. And the whole combat dynamic will be a strictly arcade-style affair. It's not exactly what you might expect from the Star Trek universe, but that's a good thing. Captain's Law. Stardate unknown. The game plays out like a TV series with each mission starting off like a new episode. But failure to complete the constantly shifting in-game objectives will result in an early cancellation. For example, only after successfully destroying the one, two, three, sheesh, four evil Federation starships in this particular installment will players be rewarded with access to a new episode. It's kind of like a play per view. Captain's Log, estimated star date 9586.1. Star Trek Shattered Universe is by no means looking like the deepest or most thoughtful Star Trek game, but it's great to see good old fashioned ship to ship combat making a comeback. So hang in there. Star Trek Shattered Universe will phase into our continuum in November 2003. Thank you for watching X-Play. Good night. Now, if you need more information on Invent This, go ahead and visit our website. Can I get out of the box now? Don't look at me! Get back in the box and play, play some F-Zero for me. Yeah, if, I, if I'm not past that half-pipe track by the end of tonight, 
Someone's not going to get any peanut butter with the sandwich tomorrow. Now, some people have actually, you know, talked about whether or not we abuse our interns. There's much evidence that we're very, very kind to them, I believe. And that's available at our right. website, techtv.com slash xplay. What's, what, what's, what's, what's he doing? No. No, no, no. You're coming back. Get here. up. This is your get Metal Gear Solid. Catch him. Ow. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> back over here. This is what always oh. happens. It's like a big intern burrito. Come on, come on, you're gonna work for me. You're gonna work for me.